So it is dark in our world, and I think it is the perfect time to go hunting for some blizz. So uh, we need to go in this direction. If I take a look at the map, we take a look. We're heading towards this wintry area. That is going to be a great place to find a blizz, and we're going to be working towards the uh, just the progression. That way we can upgrade our power more and more and more. Um, that way it'll make it a little bit easier to get into even better power <laughs> later on. It's almost like that tiered progression here. Um, so let's take a look and uh, maybe we can get something to spawn. That's kind of what we're looking for. And the best thing to find is like a mountainy type area. Ooh, this is a nice looking thing. I'm getting distracted all of a sudden. Oh, we got some spawns. All right. Get up out of here. I love how the skeletons, I put Vorpal on my sword, by the way. And the, they just, the mobs just get demolished. Like, it's just insane. Also, they drop their heads a lot more. Ooh. Ooh. I'll take all that. Lots of loot. Lots of loot. Um, so, yeah. And I think there's even stuff in these side bits here. Sometimes, maybe. Maybe not. All right. Don't even try me. You guys ain't. You guys can't get me. I think there's even more loot back there. All right. Let's clear. Let's clear this out. You guys probably can't even see very well, given that we're under, like we're in the ship. All right, let's get rid of this guy. All right, anyways, back to before it starts to become daytime. I want to find, and, and like the, uh, oh, there's a nice little village. Like, uh, it may be clogged up, like the chance of it spawning maybe clogged up by all these other mobs that are spawning but i'm gonna give it i'm gonna give it a good look um it maybe walking around would be better we can hope for something to spawn so i just found this like wintry uh, glacier area thing and these guys are absolutely hilarious looking are these like what are these oh my gosh they're ping ping howls or pingles Pingles. <laughs> are they like frozen penguins? Oh my gosh. They really are. That's hilarious. Now these guys, harpies, not a friend of mine. Not a big, big uh, supporter of harpies. All right. So I'm continuing my look. I, I think a lot of these mobs are, of course, cramming the mob cap. And uh, I'm going to have even an even lower chance of finding the mob I'm looking for to capture. But hopefully, here soon, I can maybe find the biome for it. I'm still on the look. My arrow's pointing towards the uh, biome that I'm looking for. I'm looking for like a tundra biome. And hopefully, I will be able to find it there. So, there we go. Perfect biome. I'm finding it. There we go. Let's go ahead and capture this bad boy. There we go. So, we have a Thermal Foundation Blizz. And we should be ready to go. Um, that was a little bit easier than I thought. I was just flying around here and then voila, there we go. By the way, you might notice I have like permanent hunger. I, I hope I can drink a bucket of milk and that is a bug and that like something that is not permanent. I think one of the villagers might have given it to me or, or that or something happened. I don't know, but uh, I know it's very dark here. This right here is a really cool biome, by the way. Man, all right, now I need to make my way back home. So now that we have this blizz, we can get started with it. Let's go ahead and replace what we have in here for right now and hope that this functions with our setup. Yeah, it starts to spawn on, pushes them away. Let's kick this on and start to collect what the blizz have to offer, which is blitz rods. These things are what we are going to need but it's not the only part to our setup. So we need to make um, Signalium upgrade kits. And we also need Resonant upgrade kits. The Signalium is going to take a little bit of time, um, mainly because we have to make Signalium. It's just a uh, part of the process. So take a look and see what it's going to take here. So probably the best way to get this, you could go the Thermal Foundation route, but I'm going to probably do it this way. You take some silver, some copper, and some redstone, and it will make you some Signalium right from Ender.io. Ender.io is super nice for that. So really, we just wait and combine all that together, and we're ready to go. So silver is something we're still lacking a little bit of. Um, I was, yeah, I, I did get a little bit of it um, going over here because 
We're still slowly mining, so silver is being caught up in this. Not much. Ooh, we got osmium, by the way. That's really good. Osmium means, now since we got to this dimension, means that we can actually get started with a little bit of mechanism, potentially. All right, so, which is actually a pretty good source of power and mechanism. Um, that is that is an option. All right, so we need to get into, yeah, copper. So I'm just going to do copper. We'll do half stack silver because we don't need that much. And then redstone is really what it's going to use a lot of. Uh, but for right now, let's just throw this in here. Just like it is. And we'll get that going. That's going to cook up, get us, get us some signalium. And honestly, just allow us to upgrade these machines to their near max capacity. Getting into this pyrothium is so, so easy to, to get. Um, and also getting um, lumium, that's going to be its own thing. We're going to look at that. I think we can even make that in the alloy melter. So it's just some tin, a little bit of silver, and some glowstone. And we can make some lumium. Normally, you'd have to use a whole melting setup and things like that, but I'm not worried about that. Over here... We can also make this in the alloy smelter. Um, enderium base, which is just ender pearls, platinum, and lead. And I think we're getting platinum now. Um, did we get platinum? Yes, we're starting to get platinum ore. There's platinum ore in here. All this is slowly being processed up. I mean, these machines have not been upgraded. You know, honestly, I, they probably should be upgraded, but they're not as of right now. So, oh well. But this platinum should go ahead and grind down. I think this is the only machine that can really do that process. And uh, yeah, we'll get some platinum dust and then that platinum dust can be uh, smelted into some platinum, which we actually need. Looky there. So I have my upgrade kits ready to go. Got these bad boys. Also, we have advancements for them or uh, achievements over here. Nice. So got us a little bit of monies. What does this one get us? Ooh, a reward. Molten chest piece. Wait. Damage to burning mobs? Plus 10. Fire damage to player minus 20. Huh. That's from that fish. You know, this mod has a lot of interesting things that I really I really need to dive into this mod. Because I even think there's like unlimited lava cows and things like that that you can get from that mod. Kind of crazy. All right, so let's go ahead and slap these bad boys on. Then we'll slap this on here. These are now fully upgraded, and then we'll hit them with all of the servos. Now, these are gonna be generating more power than this pipe can currently handle. And you're gonna see the buffer start to fill up. Um, and we won't even be able to see the max amount. I don't think this is in the max, this is 600 RF per tick. That might be the cap that it can produce right now. 600 a piece. That's still quite a bit. And as you can see, this isn't able to fulfill that because it's filling up his internal buffer. And it, yeah, maximum power 600 RF per tick a piece. So we are now producing more than this pipe, like I was mentioning, can handle. And this right here can also handle a bit more. Um, so what we need to do is we need to upgrade our leadstone flux ducts from here going into this. Um, and then everything else should be fine coming out of it. We just need um, an upgraded leadstone flux duct, which I think is the hardened. Block stock. So hooking this piping up should be pretty simple. Just connect that back. This will use our hammer on again. There we go to disconnect. So it goes into here. Um, and yeah, let's go ahead and upgrade this as well. So we'll put all the kits on there. So this kit, let me turn this off for a second. That boosts it up. Now holds 8 million RF and can support 4,000 RF. Hit it again now can support 9,000 RF transfer rate and is up to 18 million stored. This will do 16,000 transfer rate, 32 million worth of power stored. And last but not least, 25,000 and will store 50 million RF. So quite a large buffer. Now this is still going to be limiting the, um, the builder, right? It's limiting it to 1,250 RF per tick max output. That is all it is getting. And it is also losing a little bit of power due to efficiency. So that is another problem that comes with this. Um, but as you can see, it is working. Like it, it is transferring and doing its thing. And uh, this is also building up a buffer. So that's good. That means this is producing more than the current amount of power that we are using. However, it's not that much power, right? And we could obviously add way more. 
We can fill this whole room with dynamos. And I don't think that's a bad idea. I mean, we could fill this room almost all the way with dynamos, giving the resources that we, we have. So I'm finishing up connecting the last few here. There we go. And of course, I don't want that connected. And there we go. We have a little bit of a magmatic dynamo thing going on here. Of course, I do need a lot more resources to upgrade the rest. Um, but these are going to produce 40 a piece. I mean, they kind of boost it even more. And we're going to be able to fill this energy cell quite quickly. Um, especially once we get the resources and automation to, to set this up. Speaking of automation, our current setup here is getting a bit primitive. It's becoming a bit primitive. So I'm thinking about upgrading now that we have the power to support it. I'm thinking about having a dedicated spot, room, whatever you want to call it, that should support. Because I don't think this area back here will support it fully. I mean, we might be... Yeah, you know what? We could expand here and give us enough room, this back area, um, and call it our applied energistics area. And uh, have the ability to set up automation and all that cool stuff. So... Let's see what it takes to get into Applied Energistics. So we're going to go in and go ahead and just dive into Applied Energistics. Now I want to do this the old fashioned way. And the old fashioned way is to search for a chunk that contains a, uh, a meteor. So right here in this chunk, I'm using a meteor compass from Applied Energistics. And uh, somewhere within this area, I think F7 will show F8. I thought. There was a chunk boundary. F9. There we go. So F9 will show you the chunk boundary. And if you walk in between two chunks right here, and you notice that huh, I'm not hitting any. If you find any in the corner, like if you find that it's still circulating and you're in between two, then you're probably going to have a meteor like right in the middle. But somewhere within this chunk, probably in the center somewhere, we'd have to get really lucky. There's going to be a meteor, right? That's that's one way to do it. I don't really want to go after that method. Don't know why that like showing region. Oh, it shows they they added the region. It shows you what region file you're in. Oh, that's kind of cool. That could be really useful. I didn't know they uh, they added that. Anyways, I'm getting that's kind of advanced stuff. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at our map because this is something that is hard to miss, right? Especially if you have a map mod. This right here is also a meteor, but it's above the the world. Above ground, and we should be able to find it. I think it's just right over here, right? Am I am I pointing in the right direction? Definitely am. Let's head over here, and uh, we can start mining. Um, so yeah, this meteor is going to be a lot. They're they're just all over the place. I've seen them all over the place in this, and I think they're just their normal spawn rate. But what you want to do? Just go right to the middle, and just start mining down. And we can mine pretty fast. And right here is the chest. And look at that. Oh, we got almost every inscriber piece just in one chest. Now, this chest is really hard to break, by the way. The meteor pieces is not hard to break, but this chest, man, it is a tough cookie. All right, so that is one. And uh, I need to find the other one. There's another one over here. A little bit farther away. But this one might contain it. Or we could just, you know, go underground like I did before. Uh, but still... Like, this is a pretty decent way. I think we, like, what all did we get? We got the engineering, the calculation, and the silicon. Okay, so we're still missing the logic. And that's honestly one of the most important, I think, because you're going to use, you're going to make more logic presses than anything. I just moved this whole thing away, didn't I? I hate that you can push this around, but, you know, that is what, it is what it is. So I just made it to this one, and we ended up getting duplicates, which is okay. But we did get the one that we needed, which is exactly what I was striving for. All right, and we also got an Electrum Nugget. Out of all things to get inside that chest, a singular electric or Electrum Nugget. So one of the first things we need to make is Fluix. It is just the main thing that is needed. And honestly, right off the bat, we don't have a good source of it. We need charged Certus Quartz, right? And if you're unlucky like I have been, finding charged service cords has not been the easiest thing. Uh, but there is a way around this. We can go ahead and actually charge up service cords in certain things. Like if we take a look here, um, you can see, actually, let's go ahead and look how to make charged. Um, so we do have an energetic infuser. This is one way you could do it. But the way that applied energistics 
kind of tells you how to do it is a little bit different. And uh, it's pretty easy to get automated and set up. Um, so take a look at the charger here. It does require some Fluix, so you do need to kind of have a little bit of charge service course to get you started. I've at least found one ore. We're gonna need quartz, like good old fashioned nether quartz and redstone. And then we need a, a source of water. So grab a bucket and we can go ahead and get ourselves uh, started with this. Let's grab ourselves a little bit here. I'm just gonna place this, I don't know, where where do I wanna place some water? Right here, why not? Go ahead and place a block of water. Perfect, and then we can go ahead and throw the redstone, the charged service quartz and the nether quartz in there. That should make us a tiny little bit of Fluix crystal, right? Not much, right? And But it's enough to get us a charger, right? So back to Applied Energistics, charger, bam, we have a charger. And I believe this can work just right off your regular power. Um, and we're gonna need some conduit to go ahead and get this started and a chest, like a couple chests, why not? And we're gonna go ahead and get this like process automated. And I don't think that we have to have any filters. We'll see when we get started, but I think we can just go ahead and get this charging right away. And I'm gonna grab some hardened flux ducts. All right, so connecting this up, we're gonna do it very simply with a hammer, press a hammer. I'm just gonna set this up right here because this is a temporary setup. We won't need it forever. But I think, oh, I think this has to be powered on the bottom. The more I think about it. Go ahead and set this like so. We will set this on the bottom. And as you can see, it is being charged with RF. I'll take my chests, set them up. And we're just gonna funnel the items in. Item in here, item out there. So always active on the extract, insert, and then over here, we'll set up an extract always active and an insert over here. And uh, I think we can go ahead and put this in here. I don't think it's gonna automatically go in there, but it will not be sucked out. So we do not need a filter, but it will be sucked out whenever it is fully charged. So we can just throw this in here and let them charge up and that will get us the charged certus quartz that we actually need. So pretty simple there. Now that we have all that charged certus quartz, let's have some fun with it, throw it in here and watch it bubble. It's probably my favorite part of this. It's just watching all of this be made. There we go. All right, and we even have some leftover. We have some charge leftover. So the Fluix crystal is a fantastic. We can turn it into a Fluix block. We might need that later on. Um, but let's go ahead and get started with some of the items. These are mostly the items that I'm gonna be using today. It's pretty simple to get started. We need a little bit of crushed nether quartz though. So quartz, and I'm gonna crush it over here, mainly because I don't want it to go through my system. If it goes through my system, it'll crush it and then it will turn it into silicon, which is another thing that we're going to need. So silicon is gonna be used for every single one of these three processors that are your main uh, for this mod. So let's go ahead and dive in. I'm gonna go ahead and get the main setup going and uh, then we can start building a room. So uh, the main machine I need to make is an ME drive. I need to get an ME crafting table. But first, probably the inscriber is going to be the biggest thing. Man, I, I really need just regular wood. There we go. So yeah, the biggest thing that we're going to need to make is just the plain Jane inscriber. There we go. And I have tons of slime, so this isn't gonna be a problem at all. But what we wanna do is immediately try to upgrade. And we're also going to need an energy acceptor. This is gonna require some glass and also some Certus Quartz. So, so I think that's actually not just Certus Quartz. That's just regular Nether, um, some regular Nether Quartz right here. Perfect, some Crush Quartz. And that should also work. There we go. Perfect. So an Energy Acceptor is gonna be converting our RF power into AE2 power, which is very similar to each other. But yeah, they definitely come with their, their, their differences. Um, so setting this up, man, where do I want to put this? It doesn't really matter too much. I can always apply a GPS to this and we can see where everything is going. All right, let's turn that off. All right, so I'm just going to hook this up 
in here for right now. We're gonna have this going in here. I'm gonna go ahead and get a GPS. We're gonna use the one down below, but I think a GPS will easily function with this thing. Place it in here. That's not receiving power because we need the hammer over here. There we go. Oh, I'm rotating and I forgot about that. So go ahead and set that to input. That's output, that's output, that's output. There we go. So now this is uh this is receiving power. <laughs> <laughs> I would have been like, why is that? Why don't I have any power? Anyways, I think this works now. The best way to test is by placing the inscriber right on top and getting something started in it. Um, it really, I don't think it shows if you're using it yet. So let's get some gold. Actually, diamond is what we need. Um, or just some regular silicon. Silicon's another thing. Where did my, did I just throw the hammer? I think that's how I'm getting rid of stuff. Things are just disappearing. There it is. <laughs> I like accidentally threw it out of my inventory. So we place this here, this here, and yes, it is receiving power. It may not seem like it, but it is. And thus we will make these. Now I want to hurry up and get this done because all we need is this same inscriber, two hoppers and two engineering presses. And we have an advanced inscriber and this is way better than this regular inscriber because I can only put one material in. It won't let me put a stack. It just will do one at a time. And it is actually kind of complicated to set up automation for this singular block. But what I can do here and to make this very simple is I need an engineering press, two diamonds, and bam, we have the ability to make an advanced inscriber. So this fantastic advanced inscriber is wonderful. We can throw this in here and then throw an entire stack of silicon in there and just let it go. And then of course we can add speed upgrades, but the thing that the, the thing that I like is you could just throw in the materials and let it do its work and they actually stack in here. Not a feature that's in Applied Energistics. So this is separate. This is called AE2 stuff and there's actually more to AE2 stuff that uh, makes this mod a little bit easier to deal with um, later on. So. Pretty fantastic, and yeah, this is actually working. You can see it's sending the power and doing what it needs to do. It needs to print off a bunch of these because that's the only way we're gonna be able to get an Applied Energistics system set up today. So another thing I need to make just at least one of is this right here, the Crystal Growth Chamber. This is, we really only need it for one thing, and that is so we can make a calculation processor. The calculation processor requires a pure Certus Quartz Crystal which comes from a Certus Cord seed, which we need to grow in a certain sort of system. But because we have the Crystal Growth Accelerator, we can go ahead and bypass that, uh, the old system, and use this. Now, we still need the growth chambers, um, but those are gonna be rather simple to make. So I'm gonna go ahead and get them all together, and um, let's go ahead and I'll show you how fast this thing is compared to the old stuff. Now that I have the Crystal Growth chamber. I'm going to go ahead and place it up next to this. Again, it has to have some power there. Um, and then we need to go ahead and take a look at Certus Quartz. Let's grab some Certus Quartz. I'm just going to grind a little bit up. There we go. As we don't need much right now, maybe later on we will, but not at the moment. So we also need some sand and we take this right here, apply it with some sand and we get ourselves some seeds. This is another way to duplicate um, the Certus Quartz because it can also be used in the same sense. But as you can see, this is incredibly fast. Um, I think it's the same speed as if you were using six um, of the growth, excel or the, the growth chambers, which is what it's made out of. So just think this would be six times slower if you were only using one. This would take a lot of time and you can actually do an entire stack at one time. Um, like you can fill this entire thing up and this will work. Just the time that we're talking, this thing is done. And I didn't even accelerate it with the time in the bottle. So that's how quick this thing can be. Um, so what do you need to do with this? Well, it's the same process here. Let me go ahead and time speed this up so you can see how fast this is. We'll do this one right here. We'll plop these in. Bam. That's how quickly you can do this. Oh, man, it's insane. We'll throw these in here just so we have them. And now we have some calculation processors as well. So if anything needed the calculation processors, we have it ready to go. 
There's a little bit of something something back here. I'm going to show you guys here in a minute. So yeah, don't go nowhere because that's where our system's going to go. So I have everything ready to go. Oh boy. I'm kind of excited for this. Let's go ahead and take these two things with us as well. And we're going to set this bad boy up. Um, I have everything made and this is the room that it is all going in. This will disappear. This will just be another section to our, um, our rooms here. And this will become our applied energistics area. And it will also house our automation systems. And we're gonna, I'm gonna try my best to hide them as best I can. But for right now, we need to figure out where I want my panel to be. And I think right here is going to be like where I want the main portion to sit. Um, and what I wanna do is I wanna have this drop down. I wanna have an energy cell that is down below it. Right here is going to be where I have my, um, basically inscriber and the crystal growth right here. And that means the energy acceptor needs to go down here, which means I need to go over here and grab my connection that I had going to it through that GPS. I need to reconnect it specifically to that space. Um, and then I'm going to talk a little bit about something that is required. I just recommend it. Um, it's just, you'll have a, a harder time if you do not do what I'm about to do. Oh, I did not mean to throw that on there, but this right here, the energy cell. I highly recommend using an energy cell because you don't want to go directly off the energy acceptor. You will run out of power when doing any type of large crafts, even just if you're using your regular system. Like if you're just grabbing something from your ME drive, you're still going to encounter some problems. So yeah, I don't recommend using that right away. So just for our plain, simple setup, I'm going to set up an ME drive here. It's going to have... 10 for our first setup, it's going to have 10 one K storage cells. And you may be like, why didn't you just go with more? Because we have a lot of individual items. We have a lot of individual type of items and only like each one of these only hold 63 types of items. So really in this setup, there's only 630 types of items it can hold even using these one K storage cells. So, I mean, that's not much, right? Um, so let's go ahead and uh, hook up the orange ME cable. And orange, you may ask why? Well, it changes the color of your terminal. And uh, thus, I now have an orange ME terminal, which is mighty fine. And yes, we can go ahead and start storing things in here. And uh, I need to empty out all of this. Now, I could empty this out... Um, by hooking this into some storage thing. I'm just going to do it by hand. It's not going to take that much time. Um, and I should be able to get just about... It should be able to fit everything from here into that. Hopefully. So guys, I hope you enjoyed today's episode where we got an applied energistic system set up. We also got some other things done, like a fully upgraded our magmatic dynamos. Guys, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, be sure to click that subscribe button. Also, give this video a huge thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it. And I'll see you guys in the next episode. As always, thanks for watching.